name is Graham Potter and in the workshop today we've bought uh, this old mountain pine for you. Uh, this is a Pinus Chembra which is a five needle variety of pine uh, that grows in the Italian Alps uh, and in uh, through Switzerland as well uh, and it grows at very high altitude. This tree was collected at about 10,000 feet. After the tree was lifted about four years ago it spent a couple of years in its pot and then we bare rooted this tree completely and put it in some good quality soil. Since then the tree has come on in leaps and bounds, it's got big buds, it's uh, very strong, it's very healthy and it's doing very well so now we want to begin to get some style into this tree. Uh, there's not a great deal of carving to do here, we've got this part here where there was a big root that's obviously been pulled out of the ground originally in the mountains uh, and then we've just got one long branch. What we've got to do with this tree now is begin to get some style into it and that's going to involve a fairly large bend because all of the foliage on this tree is on one branch. That branch has got to be bent so we can bring some foliage up perhaps into here and a little bit of carving as you've seen us do many times before. From this angle you can really see the challenge that we have with this material in as much as we have this nice old branch here which is cracked halfway through at this point uh, and then all the rest of the foliage is over here and obviously we've got to bend that forwards and that's going to be a little bit tricky to do because we've got this old break through here which has gone halfway through the original trunk. Now we've got to support that very carefully and move the bend along to bring this part up. From that point on it should be fairly straightforward just to position the branches because fortunately chamber is nice and soft, it's very flexible and very easy to bend. The first thing we're going to do with this material is begin to remove all the old dead bark with a pine like this when it's been cut back from a much bigger tree it's very typical that uh, a lot of the bark begins to dry out and die back naturally so we want to start to clean this all back where the cuts are in the tree and so on and so forth so we can begin to see what's actually alive and what's dead uh, and then we know what we've got to work with exactly. 